Um, so as Taylor mentioned, um, my name is Alicia Ellis, and I am postdoc, not grad student. Uh, and I am actually working with Taylor Griffiths. Um, so pollination is an ecosystem service that many of us have recently heard about, primarily because of the decline of honeybees that has happened in the United States and Europe. And this is of concern because pollinators contribute to crop yields, which are economically important. But there's a recent study that has shown that pollinators may also be important for human health. And the general idea is that pollinators contribute crops, and there are nutrients in those crops. And what this study did was actually calculate the proportion of the global supply of nutrients that comes directly from pollinators. And they found that it was pretty big. So at the end of this paper, what the um, author said was, well, if we continue to see this decline of pollinators that we're currently seeing, we're going to see a decrease in the global supply of nutrients, and this could be really bad for nutritional health. We could see an increase in disease risk. Now, the problem with this study was that they actually didn't look at what people actually eat. And so this whole chain of events from pollinator removal to increase in disease risk depends on the fact that pollinator removal actually decreases what people eat. And that decrease is significant enough to actually increase malnutrition. So we wanted to fill in the gap and ask how pollinators contribute to the nutritional status of children in developing countries. To do that, we needed to know what children eat. So we actually got dietary surveys from children in four countries. And these surveys basically tell every single thing that children ate in a given day. And the first step of the analysis was to actually figure out what their nutrient intake and risk of disease was, assuming full pollination. To do this, we used those dietary surveys and estimate, estimated what's called the usual intake distribution. So on the y-axis here, this is basically the number of children that get a certain vitamin A intake per day in Zambia. That dotted line you see there on the graph is the estimated average requirement, and that's similar to the RDA that we're familiar with. So if a child gets less vitamin A than that, that dotted line, they are mal malnourished. So we can look at the proportion of the population that falls below that line, and that's our estimate of disease risk in that population. And again, this is assuming full pollinators, tons of pollinators. So the next step was to actually figure out what would happen if we completely removed pollinators. And to do that, we removed foods from the diet of each child that depended on pollinators and recalculated this distribution and the proportion of the population that was at risk. And now we can compare. If you look at the difference in those populations, in the, in the proportion of the population at risk, it looks like 9% of the population fell below the EAR when you remove pollinators. So 9% looked like they became at risk, but there's actually uncertainty in the estimate of those distributions, and this difference wasn't significant. So this is one country and one nutrient, but as I said, we did four countries, and we actually did five nutrients. And this table shows the difference in the proportions of the population at risk, and only two of them were significant, and only vitamin A. So, the main point, you're going to take anything away. Do pollinators contribute nutrients to the food supply? The answer is obviously yes. They contribute food and they contribute nutrients. But would the loss of pollinators actually change health outcomes in people? And the answer is that it's not likely. Um, if you'd like to find out all the reasons why we don't think it's likely, or if you'd like to hear about the rest of our interesting health ecosystem um, projects, 